Sorry Soda Drinkers, a study published this week says a can of diet soda each day raises your risk of liver disease by 60%. Sugary beverages are no better. They raise the risk of liver disease by about 50%. Nine News medical expert Dr. Pyle Coley is with us this afternoon to talk all about the study. That is a lot, 60%. So uh, talk to us about some of these findings. I mean, I was really alarmed because we've been telling diabetics for the longest time, go drink diet soda, right? It's better for you. I've been telling all my patients with obesity, with metabolic syndrome, the same thing. And now as a physician, I'm finally starting to get data that tells me it's maybe not so good for you. Last year, we had a study that told us that erythritol increases our risk of stroke and heart attack and may cause our blood cells to clot. And that's an artificial sweetener. So what are we to do with all this? Mm -hmm. Well, I, gosh, I love a good diet. I know you do. <laughs> Call she it loves a fridge it. cigarette. Mm -hmm. You know, you take it out. It's ice cold. It's a nice mm -hmm. break. But why is it so bad for us? Because it tastes so good. Well, so there's lots of reasons. So sugar makes sense, right? When you drink a no. can of sugary soda, it's got 10 teaspoons of sugar. causes a big spike in your blood sugar that then triggers insulin, which then makes you gain weight and all the other metabolic derangements that happen. Diet soda, it turns out, may do the same kind of thing. It triggers the same sugar circuits in the brain, so it has that same kind of addictive behavior, which is why that fridge cigarette so good. feels so good. <laughs> yeah. And it may trigger an insulin spike as well. On top of that, it changes what the gut microbiome, the bacteria in the gut is like. It changes the inflammation. So we think that it's just as bad. And what was really great about the study is they actually looked at 124,000 people over That's 10 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they looked forward. So they saw how their behaviors today were affecting what they did forward. Now keep in mind, this was based on recall. So Alex, if I asked you how many diet sodas have you had in the last six mm -hmm. months? You're interrogated right it now. It might be hard. <laughs> it might be hard. I do like way, one or two a week. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's not that's, terrible, right? right. Is but there a difference between one or two a week and somebody that's drinking three a day? Well, definitely there's a dose dependent relationship. But the point I was making was that it's hard to recall exactly how much we've had. So a lot of this is what we call association, maybe not causation, because it's possible you're reaching for the diet soda because maybe you're not exercising as much or maybe you've gained weight or maybe you're doing something else that's also associated with this fatty liver disease which is what we found. But what liver condition did it cause when they looked in, the, in this study? Yeah so this is a condition that's becoming increasingly common. I'm seeing it even in thin people actually. It used to be called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD, but now we changed the name to MAFLD which is metabolic syndrome associated fatty liver disease. So it usually happens in diabetics and heavier people but now like I said we're seeing it in thinner people as well. And what can happen if it progresses for a long time is persistent inflammation in the liver and you end up getting cirrhosis, almost like a drinker would. And the incidence of this has gone up 50%, with 38% of Americans now having this NAFLD condition that we don't have great treatments for. Oh, this is hard to hear. I know. Uh, also, a study came out earlier that said erythritol, am I saying that right? Yeah. Erythritol may also be associated with heart disease risk. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yep, so this is a sugar that's found in fruits naturally. So, okay, so it must be great, right? Because it's found naturally. But you purify it and you give it to people. And the Cleveland Clinic study from last year tells us that those that tend to have higher levels of this natural sugar in their bloodstream have more heart attacks and strokes. And then when they look in the test tube, that's because maybe it causes more blood clots as well. So I'm kind of left asking the million dollar question to myself now, what am I gonna recommend my heart patient? Is there anything, like if it comes to artificial sweeteners, are you gonna recommend anything to them? So some are better than others. So in this particular study, when people switch from either diet soda or sugary drinks, to guess what, ladies, water. They reduce their you risk. You was coming. Of liver it disease. sparkling water? It can be sparkling okay. with the lime. Water is water. Yeah, right. With the lime. So you can go for, you with know, lime. making oh, your spicy. sparkling water a little sexy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could also be like a tea, you know, like um, iced tea or something like that, but just nothing that has too much sugar in it. Now, I will tell you, for most of my patients, I'm actually probably going to go backwards and say a little bit of real sugar might be better than mm. a lot of this artificial stuff. Now I'm talking about those little mini cans of soda. If you're on the plane, just one little cup. You don't take the full can. Mm. Like they offer the full can, just say no to them. But other types of sugar that might be better. Stevia is thought to be a little bit better. Monk fruit is a better sweetener than others. The ones that I will stay away from or tell my patients to stay away from are aspartame and high fructose corn syrup because those two are really, really significantly. Hmm. So if you had to choose mm. right now, Mm. What if I I've got to grab a Coke in this moment? Diet regular. Uh, diet. 
okay. diets. Now. Yes, because okay. even despite the studies, we know that the sugar, I mean, 10 teaspoons of sugar mm -hmm. is more than your entire daily allowance. Jeez. So we're still learning about diets. So if you really, really have to have a Coke, a small little Diet Coke, but try to go for that sparkling water with lime. You can do it, Alex. You can do it. <laughs> I know, I, I'm good. But I, I remember it. Once in a blue like, moon. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Balance, Dr. Coley, as always, thank you.